we always think of, you know, democracy as a good thing. In a democracy, the majority is more right than wrong, and if you get, you know, 51% is more right than 49, and, and 70% is even more right. But, you know, if you get to 99.9%, .9%, I mean, maybe that's totally right, or maybe you're in North Korea. <laughs> and uh, you have to ask this, this, you know, this very subtle question, a very imp all important question, where do you sort of shift from the wisdom of crowds to the madness of crowds? Where do these things shift to becoming, you know, a mob or a racket or simply um, something that's, you know, a totalitarian lie? Uh, and there's sort of, um, you know, in the, in the philosophy of science, sort of the, you know, one of the ways I, I think you can sort of frame it is that science always thinks of itself as fighting a two-front war against extreme skepticism and extreme dogmatism. So sort of the way it, it originated in the 17th and 18th century. So extreme skepticism, if I say, you know, I don't believe the audience exists, I don't, can't trust my senses, you can't do science. Extreme dogmatism, you know, the Aristotelian notion that the earth can't possibly move, that's probably also bad for science. And of course, in its, you know, 18th century version where the scientists style themselves as, you know, deists and rationalists and free thinkers of various types, it was always the fight against dogmatism that, uh, that, that was what dominated. And in a very, I think, paradoxical turn, that is still, you know, the way, uh, the way they think of themselves, even though um, if you sort of say where, where it's gotten unbalanced and erred, it has obviously just become um, massively on the side of dogmatism, um, not, not enough skepticism, skepticism at all. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, you see this, of course, in all the uh, genuflections to science with capital S, you know, in this household, we believe in science, that's sort of an evidence that you don't, or, uh, or just even this, the, you know, the, the assertion, you know, I always think that, you know, when you have to call things science, you know they aren't, like climate science or political science. We don't use physical science or chemical science because, uh, you know, you don't, you don't need to push it quite that hard. And, uh, and, and the sort of, um, you know, extreme dogmatism, um, you know, has, of course, uh, it's not even been one of a very stable variety, like maybe, you know, the the Catholic Church and its um, anti-Aristotelian notions, or its Aristotelian notions on Earth, you know, it didn't shift itself every month or every year on this. And we've had a dogmatic, maybe an atheist church in science, a dogmatic church that has uh, nevertheless had crazed hairpin turns in the last uh, year. Just on, you know, on the COVID thing, there are too many to enumerate, but just, you know, the very basic ones are, you know, masks first ineffective, then required, you know, vaccines one year ago, Kamala Harris was still campaigning that, uh, that you know, she would never take a Trump vaccine. Now they're mandatory. And of course, uh, of course there's the, uh, you know, the strange history of the lab leak where it was first racist and taboo. Now it's probably correct, even though I'm not totally certain we're allowed to discuss that yet, but it's sort of, a, it's probably sort of allowed to, allowed to discuss this. And this sort of dogmatism, the, these hairpin turns, this sort of epistemic closure is I think one of the ways that things have just gotten deranged over and over and over again.